Yeah, so according to uh, the instructions for getting the body off on this model, you just got to simply tip upside down, pull the body um, apart either side. There she is in the cradle. So to do this, of course, I'm going to use the uh, plastic shims to get into the body to keep it open. Yeah, so on Model Railway Forum, there's a chap who's done a DCC install and I really do appreciate his uh, information on this site because I've done some research and this there's only this guy who's done a, a really smart review on this model train. I'm actually uh, trying to join this forum a few times but I had problems logging in and trying to get on the site. It's just a nightmare so I just give up in the end. <clears throat> but it is a good forum and this guy's got some live some video footage rather of the real train and his model train and he gives the key information of how to get the body off which is removing the rear fairing on the back which he doesn't tell you about in the instructions um, so there we have it so you've got to basically prise the rear fairing off of the screwdriver I'll show some close up pictures and once you get that off, you, get, you then get access to the rear of the coach body to flip it off the chassis, apparently. So I'm going to try and get this off now. There we go, it's off and it looks like that. And apparently now, we should be able to just lift off the uh, body. Not sure whether this is going to work or not. Um, I think there's another little tab inside or something. You've got to push, I'm going to have a look at that now. Yeah, believe me, this is tricky, and what the uh, chap says on that website I just shown is very, very true. It is a tricky one to get into this, probably the second hardest one I've ever tried to get into because you've got to take the fairing off which looks like that on the back then you've got to find and locate the centre tab prise that out slightly slide you two these two in then uh, carefully slide these two in and then you've got to try and manoeuvre these other two sticks in further down and it is really tricky to do Without damaging the body uh, using these plastic shims you don't scratch it if, if they slip which is ideal if you use screwdrivers you'd knacker it it'd be shot the body but it took me 10 minutes to just suss out how to do it and another 10 minutes to try and just get to this point so soon it should slide off instructions are terrible absolutely terrible because it doesn't say anything about this backfaring Yeah, so as you can see, it's it's nearly out. So there we go. These shims have come in really handy. I'm hoping. Yeah, it's nearly there. Now again, I'm going to have to stop and just do a bit more research to get the front part yeah again <clears throat> you've got to place two plastic shims near the front and very carefully prise out from this area here below the cab and then push forward and voila it's still tight shrine out loud this is unbelievable Still won't come off. Oh, wow. I've got it off. That was one of the most... In fact, I think that is one of the most difficult body removals I've ever done. Because the body fits so precise. Very, very tight fitting body and it's factory sprayed as well, which... You just gotta be careful not to scratch that paintwork.
So there we go. Ah, oh, man. So it's got um, the interface plug there, which you just pull out. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, I'm just going to have to carefully pull that out and try and fit in the chip somewhere. Should easily go probably somewhere around there anyway. I'm not sure yet. I might put it further back. It's got a panto. It's quite unusual this because it's got a switch. Same panto and wheel. As far as I know, it's not got a working pantograph, so that's strange. Must have been a future model or chassis for another model or something. Yeah, uh, motor looks oh fairly good. It's a nice weight in in the model in this uh, drive car. Uh, yeah, but obviously a whole lot different to what I'm used to, which is the uh, tricks and marking stuff. Yeah, just overall the wiring and the soldering is very messy. Uh, not to the standard of what I'm used to on the models that I usually buy, but you get what you pay for. And uh, for the money, it's definitely worth it just for the paint job, because the paint job on it is fine. It's fantastic. Um, no problems there. Yeah, as for fitting the chip, um, I'm going to bend it back and fit it with insulation underneath over the top around that area of the interface. Um, because if I try fitting it here, uh, the pantograph switches, that, that doesn't exist anyway. The inside of the uh, cab uh, body drops down at the back. I don't know if you can see that, so uh, it's not suitable for putting there. I don't think it's going to go. I'm going to put it there, right in that position. So, and there's a screw here that's loose on this PC board mount that's threaded. So, I'm just going to bend that around, put some bath insulation tape there, flat side down. Let's carefully mount that. That's it, that's all there is to it. That's how I'm doing it, I'm not messing around with the wires and just I'll leave it exactly like that. In fact, there's probably there's a couple of little hooks there. I can just hook them in, I suppose. Like that. But that's adequate, that's not gonna short out. Um right, as far as I'm concerned, that's the only way I can fit it. So I'll give it a quick test. works. It's fairly smooth actually. It's going to need running in. It's a bit jerky. It's got a high quality lens chip in there. Digital Plus. So it's got the best possible chip to go in there. Non-sound. Um, it just needs running in I suppose. See the body goes back on. The LEDs on the front are separated on the inside via a red and clear uh, plastic, depending on forward and backwards. There's a flimsy little bit of plastic in there that just separates the uh, brightness from one, from the red to the clear when they change over. But anyway, also there's just a, a flimsy little bit of cardboard that's just been loosely stuck in place. That's to stop the light beam going up into the upper cab area. Where there is a light, I might actually try and make the light shine through that, if I can, but the actual uh, cab is blocked out. There's no windows in the cab anyway, so... Yeah, I've just pulled this piece off, it just, it's really, really badly glued in. Anyway, I've just pulled it off, so that'll shine the light through the top light in the cab. In fact, the way the, the separation for the red and light white clear plastic for a forward and reverse bulb it's just a piece of loose 
masking insulation tape that's been really loose just any old owl fitted it's pretty poor also I've added a small piece of cardboard here to separate the, separate the red and white um, plastic prisms to get a body back on you've got to start from here above before the slots that we can see and they start about there that sort of go inwards on the body make sure your wires are clear slide it in about there making sure all wires are clear and then it just slides in like so we'll just push down the body carefully then Yeah, so I've just checked the, pro, uh, the lighting and it just clips in and that should be it. That's not in properly but I'll have to play around with that. Yeah, so there we are. I've got a top cab light as well now. works alright by just taking out that piece of plastic gives you the top cab light not satisfactory